Okay, let me get your attention for a bit. Um, we're working on the rocks, right? And do you remember what we did last week with them? Remember what, what, what it was called, what we did? We were able to take a primitive, right? I'm gonna do that. Primitive polygon mesh cube. Um, and then we were able to manipulate the separate parts of it. Uh, I could select points and I could translate those. Right, I could select edges and I'm gonna use um, F9, which is a draw through mode. And I could scale them, let's say, or translate them. And actually this scale, that's a local scale. Let's try a global scale on that. Uh, real time shaded, open GL. Um, and I could select polygons in polygon mode. Um, and do things to those polygons like that. And we'll scale that polygon like that. Um, that's called point edge and polygon manipulations, right? Builds on top of primitive modeling. Uh, what we're going to look at today <clears throat> is a problem that uh, a bunch of you are starting to get to when you're trying to modeling these, which is that you can move around the individual components, but now you need more detail somewhere. Um, and we're going to talk about a type of modeling called subdivided surface modeling, which is probably the most popular modeling technique today. And it's, um, it's a good one in that it is exactly what it sounds like. What a subdivided surface modeling technique is, is it's any tool we use in the program that lets us add more geometry just where we want it. Let's us add more points, let's us add more edges, let's us add more polygons. Um, I'll just start to show you some stuff and then we can, um, we can from there uh, see, see what you can do with it. Um, I'm going to be trying to build this rock uh, here and you'll see, I'm going to use my keyboard equivalents. We should have those sheets. Ah, got the escape key. I'm going to hitting the A key which just frames everything up and I'm going to go to point mode to start. Um, I'm going to select a bunch of points. I'll select them on the top. I'm going to go to F7, which gives me square selection. And I'm going to introduce another idea uh, called a modal menu. Um, we're familiar with menus, which are the things at the top of the screen that give us choices, right? The only difference a modal menu has to a, those menus is that a modal menu changes based on what mode you're in. And the modes are point, uh, edge, polygon, object. So I'm right now in point mode. And when I click my right mouse button anywhere, I will get a menu like that. But if I click my right mouse button near the points, I get this menu. This menu here has a bunch of subdivided surface techniques that apply two points exclusively. Uh, the first one I'm gonna show you is called bevel. Um, and actually, I'll make it, based on my rock, I'll actually make a more useful bevel, um, although not immediately. Um, if I hit, if I have those selected and I hit bevel components, watch what happens to the points. Okay. They are beveled, they are shaved off, plus I got extra points. See that? So more geometry has been made. I've also gotten this dialog, this property panel. This property panel affects the bevel and lets me change what I can do about it. Now note this too, as I start to apply subdivision techniques, straight lines tend toward curves. That's another thing about subdivided surface uh, technologies. Uh, they tend to take our straight lines, which we're used to, and break them up into lines that better approximate curvy things. Um, you'll note, when I did that bevel, I got a selection that now includes all of my points. I can bevel that again. If I right mouse that, you'll see this is now getting a lot more curvy. That even from a distance, it reads as sort of a curve, right? Um, I could keep going, but as I keep going, I get more detail. And the more detail I get, the harder it is to manage. So generally, when you're modeling something with subdivided surfaces, what you want to do is start out with as little geometry as possible, and then slowly add it just where you need it. Um, and as an example, I don't really need that on this rock right now, so I'm going to undo all of that by just Control-Zing my way back out of it. 
back to this. Now, I'm going to go to edge mode. I do need some edge bevels on this. Um, I need one here, and I need one here, and I need some along the edges up here. So let me take, I'm going to take the front edges of this here, and I'll bevel them. I'll grab this edge here, uh, and I'm going to hit F9, which lets me draw through, hold down my shift key, grab that edge there, right mouse click. Now this is a different menu. This menu applies just to edges. Let's pick bevel. And actually, I, I sort of like that. That's getting closer to what I want, what I've come to expect from this rock. Like that. Now, you'll notice I have more dialogues, too. Um, I can increase the size of the bevel. Uh, I can change the center of the bevel. Um, this is kind of fun, actually, the rounding thing. I can change how round the thing looks. I can make it look very round. I can also change how sharp that roundness is. See that? A lot of different controls there. I'll actually back that down to two, let's say, which I like. Um, I'm going to use another uh, tool that we talked about a little bit last week, but that does oftentimes come up in subdivision technology. Uh, I'm going to go to object mode, and I'm going to use the knife tool. Um, the knife tool sits off my left bracket key and gives me that knife. And I know for this rock in particular, I have to, I have to be able to move some geometry around the middle. So I want to put, I want to put um, some vertices and an edge in there. I can very quickly do that with a knife. I can do it in this window. Click here, and I'm going to click here. And now I have this new geometry, which will allow me to select this edge there. But now, since I made that bevel, I have some other edges to worry about here. And in this top view, I'm going to translate that to better approximate my rock. Um, and I'm also going to push it down in this view here. And notice I can use my plan views very effectively here. Fairly effectively, I should say. Um, on the bottom of this thing, let's go to polygon mode. I'll select this, and I'm going to scale this polygon first because it is a little bit wider than everything else. Um, and actually, it is slightly outset. So let me select the polygon. I'm going to right mouse click, and I'm going to bevel the polygon, which does that, which actually gives me a base, much like this rock has. Uh, I still have a dialog here. I can control the same sort of things. Actually, I prefer that like that. Yeah. Um, and I can do things like add more detail to it if I want or less detail that way. I actually probably want that like that. And I will go over here. I'll select this. And I'm going to scale this polygon a bit and rotate it a tad bit more like that. And maybe in this window, too, a little bit like that. Translate the whole thing this way. Um, and if I look at my rock, this also has another bevel coming out of it. So with just that polygon selected, I'm going to use that knife tool again. And note, just the polygon has the edge now. And now I can go to edge mode. Um, you know what? Actually, I'm going to go to polygon mode. And I'm going to hit F9 and select just this polygon. I'm going to bevel that polygon, which is going to give me a slight, uh, maybe a bigger, no, I sort of like that. And I can go back in here and grab this and translate it down, which is what I really want to do. like that, and you'll see I'm getting somewhat closer to the shape of my rock. Remember, you have to figure out your perspective in all this. So I'm going that way. That's the rock I'm looking at right there. And that's using modal menus and just a couple simple tools there. That is bevel, and that is the knife tool to add detail to what I'm doing. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Anything? I know it's early. It's an awful early time to learn this stuff, isn't it? I think. <laughs> um, I'm going to show you one other tool, and then I want you to try this for a little bit, OK? I'm going to show you the extrude tool, um, which really won't actually help me much on this rock, because I don't have many extrusions on it. But m well, actually, I do have one tiny thing that's extruding, which is right there. Um, an extrusion is something that pushes out. 
And just to show you what that is, if I go to point mode, let's select the points on the top. F7, we'll get that. Right mouse click, extrude along axis, does that. Again, makes more geometry, pushes stuff out. There's a bunch of controls in the property panel. Uh, merge is probably one of the most important ones. If I turn it off, everything goes in its own direction. And I can change the skirting ratio, which is the size of the skirt, the part where the extrude comes from, like that. And I can increase the number of subdivisions, which again, head it towards a curviness. Plus remember, I can go beyond these values. This goes to 10 grid units but I can put in 20 if I want. And if it will take it, it will take it. If it won't, it will just error back to the other thing. So the sliders are almost always just suggestions. Um, another inter interesting thing about this is that if you go backwards, you actually make holes, which we might be able to see if I hit F. Yeah. See that? So you can use an extrude as a way to push something in like that too if you wanted to. Although in this case, We'll do it out like that. Um, and then I can do the same thing on edges. Let's go to edge mode. I'm going to select these three edges here, right mouse, and I'm going to extrude those. They make a similar sort of pushed out thing, right? Like that. We'll increase the skirting ratio a bit and give them some subdivisions. Do you remember in that video we watched? Let's turn off merge. Um, where the guy said, I'm going to make a turbine type thing. If, you, if I take a round thing and I select the edges and then I extrude them, you kind of get a turbine-like thing pretty quickly. So if you ever wonder why you see a lot of turbine type things, probably edge extrudes. Um, and I can do polygon extrudes, which is really what I need to do for this, which maybe I'll go back and do eventually. Um, I'm going to take this polygon here, right mouse it, extrude along axis, and you'll see, boom. It gives me another surface. This doesn't have all the same controls as the one we had before. Uh, for example, no skirting ratio. But I can change this inset amount. I can make it even higher. Yes, I can. Uh, I can increase the number of subdivisions. And we have a transform panel. I can scale, rotate, and modify it. See, and actually, see that? that that's, that's a bit of ugly geometry there. And I think I'm going to fix it by going back like that. Yes. OK, does anyone remember what the original object was? What did this start out as? There's a really big hint right here. A building? No. <laughs> a cube, that's right, that's right. Which could be, buildings can be cube shape. But yes, this was a cube. Um, this many steps ago. This is everything I've done to it. This is a history of all the stuff I've done. Now, strangely, I can go back, and we might talk about that another time, but we don't have to worry about it right now. It's just good that you know it's there. Um, subdivided surface techniques let you very rapidly go from the simple primitive shapes to much more complicated shapes. And one of the trademarks of subdivided surface modeling is curves with sharp edges. And you can see that. You can see it here. See that? How we have this sort of curvy thing, but then we have a very sharp edge there. We can see it here. We can see it over here. Um, you see it every day in parking lots, cars. All sorts of cars these days. If you notice that in the last 10 years, they've started using these swooping curves with very sharp edges on them. That's all this technology, which we will talk about at another time. Um, Try right now, with your rocks in hand, to use some of these modeling techniques, OK? Use modal menus, use um, extrusions, use bevels on points, edges, and polygons. And you can use the knife tool to see if you can get closer to the geometry that you're working on there, OK? And then we'll come back in a bit and discuss a little bit more.